My name's Alison and I'm going to talk you through our paper, The Dynamic Localization of Cytoplasmic Dynein in Neurons is Driven by Kinesin 1. Neuronal axons can be very long. One extreme example of this is the motor neuron, which can have an axon up to a metre in length. This presents a problem for neurons because most of their newly synthesised protein is made in the soma, and to get to the presynapse, this has to be moved all the way down the length of the axon. Neurons use axonal transport to move their newly synthesized protein down the axon to where it's needed. The phases of axonal transport have been defined by injecting radiolabeled amino acids near the vicinity of neuronal cell bodies and then timing at what point the newly synthesized protein travels down the nerve. This has defined two broad categories of axonal transport fast and slow. Both fast and slow transport are powered by microtubule motor proteins. Fast transport includes cargoes like vesicles moving down the axon at around 1 to 2 micrometers a second. Slow transport on the other hand moves 10 to 100 times slower than this and includes cytoskeletal proteins such as tubulin and neurofilaments as well as cytosolic protein headed for the presynapse. One of these cytosolic proteins is a microtubule motor itself, cytoplasmic dynein. Dynein is responsible for moving cargoes towards the minus end of microtubules. Within the axons of neurons, all the microtubules are arranged with uniform polarity. The plus ends point towards the presynapse and the minus ends point back towards the soma. This means that cytoplasmic dynein can only step along the microtubules in the axon, moving back towards the soma. But dynein is absolutely required at the end of the axon. It's needed for growth cone extension and axon elongation, as well as key retrograde trafficking events such as neurotrophic signaling and distal autophagy. We wanted to understand how dynein was reaching the end of the axon. To answer this question, we took advantage of the dynein GFP mouse. This mouse has a GFP tag on a neuron-specific subunit of cytoplasmic dynein. When we cultured hippocampal neurons from these mice, we saw prominent accumulations of dynein in the distal axon. We wondered whether this accumulation occurred before or after axon specification. To look at this, we imaged dynein GFP neurons just after plating. During this time, neurites undergo growth and retraction until one of them is specified as the axon. It then undergoes a characteristic growth spurt. When we imaged the dynein GFP neurons during this process, we found that the accumulation of dynein in any one neurite was actually very transient, and it moved in between different neurites prior to axon specification. Dynein then accumulated in the nascent axon coincident with axon specification. When we imaged axons of known polarity with near-turf microscopy, we observed many low-intensity anterograde events that had a characteristic velocity of around 1 micrometer a second, the same as the anterograde microtubule motor kinesin. Kinesin is responsible for carrying its cargo along microtubules towards the polymerizing plus end. In the context of an axon, this means that kinesins move away from the soma towards the axon terminal. Kinesin and dynein have multiple different subunits and we've isolated direct interactions between the dynein intermediate chain and both the kinesin light chain and the kinesin heavy chain. We established a protocol to be able to analyse the transport of dynein in the axon. We bleached sections of axon to leave a protected pool of dynein GFP that we could track through time. Taking line scans and looking at the relative midpoint of the dynein GFP protected pool, we were able to track the anterograde bias in transport. When we treated neurons with nicodazole to depolymerize the microtubules, we completely abolished this anterograde bias in transport. 
When we treated neurons with a peptide designed to block the interaction between dynein and kinesin, we observed a 50% reduction in the anterior grade velocity of dynein in the axon. The net transport rate of dynein in the axon is around tenfold slower than the speed of an individual kinesin or the anterior grade events that we've been able to observe by near turf microscopy. This suggests that there's a limited supply of active kinesin motors available for slow transport cargoes. Transient interactions of a slow transport cargo, such as cytoplasmic dynein, lead to short bursts of motility in the anterior grade direction and release into the cytoplasm, followed by continued movement of the kinesin motor.